Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now this is a pre-recorded live stream. Now two weeks ago, I made a video uh, questioning if metformin is a wonder drug and I received many inquiries on how it compares to berberine, a natural product that can also lower blood sugars. And just a few days ago, metformin hit the headline in the medical community again because Dr. Eric Topo mentioned metformin as a breakthrough for long COVID, and he wrote, if I got COVID, I'd take metformin for two weeks at the doses used in this trial on his Substack article. Now, so let's talk about what Dr. Topo meant in his statement in this pre-recorded stream, and we will have a second video this week comparing metformin and berberine. Now, let's see. Now, for those of you who still follow COVID and COVID scientists, you may have heard of Dr. Eric Tobo. Now, he is a very respectable cardiologist and one of the leading people studying long COVID. In his recent Substack article here, he wrote, if I got COVID, I'll take metformin for two weeks at the doses used in this trial. Now, that is a pretty bold statement coming from a leading physician scientist. Um, so what was this trial he referred to? Let's take a second look here. Now, the truth is that there have been no new major trials on metformin for COVID other than the COVID out study, which has already published its major findings in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I also covered the same sub-analysis two weeks ago that showed metformin uh, patients who took an immediate release metformin with an increasing dose for up to 15 100 milligram per day for 14 days had a 42% uh, lower relatively decrease in long COVID incidence. Now, so if you have followed, if you have followed, if you follow every video on my channel, there's really nothing new in terms of metformin science on long COVID. And what it's a little bit surprising to me is that as much as I respect Dr. Topo's long COVID research and contribution to the medical field in general, I cannot fully agree with uh, the, you know, the statement saying that, you know, just to start metformin right away with the doses that they used in the trial just because uh, to, you know, just, just because of getting COVID. And here are the reasons I'm going to break it down for you. All right. Now, first, you know, the questions we need to ask is that whether this study can be generalized. I look at the study populations here just very briefly. Now, 51% of the study participant here had a body mass index of more than 30, which is considered in the obese range. The range of BMI went from 27 to 34. Now here saying stated in another version of this preprint that is already in the Lancet. All right, so the range of BMI went from 27 to 34. So that means regardless of age, everyone in this COVID out study was overweight and obese based on the current BMI standard. Now, I know some people will argue that, you know, BMI is not the best indicator. Yes, it has limitations. For example, someone who is really muscular and muscular um, can have a very high BMI, but their body fat content would be very low. However, but, uh, you know, BMI is still the most widely accepted indicator for body composition. Now, the problem is that younger, healthy and active people can also get long COVID. And unfortunately, this COVID out study does not cover these people. So no one knows if metformin can help these younger and healthier people in terms of uh, you know, preventing long COVID. Now, second, now there is a um, documented differences 
in long COVID incident rate among ethnic groups. And a most recent、uh, study that is in this topic was published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine、uh, on February 16th this year. The study reported that, okay, let's look, look at the conclusion. Look, reported that not only do ethnic minority groups have a higher incidence of long COVID, but their long COVID symptoms are also different. Well, what about this study? About 83% of the study participants self identified as white. So when they report that metformin lowered the risk of long COVID, it should break down into subgroups, but this study did not report that data. Now, third, this study also did not show what metformin can do for people who are currently suffering. Long COVID. Now, some of these、uh, limitations were addressed and discussed in their latest versions of the preprint. So、uh, it's it's open for public. So please feel free to download that and read about that. Okay. Now, so as promising as metformin may seem to for preventing long COVID, I will not jump the gun right now and say if I got COVID, I'll take metformin. Now, when this statement comes from a very prominent physician,、uh, I think it needs more clarification, or it would just、uh, worsen the overprescribing problem that is hurting many Americans, in my opinion. Plus, okay, plus there's more arguments to it. Some people just do not tolerate, you know, or just cannot take、uh, metformin because of its gastrointestinal side effects. Now, a study basically showed that or reported that、uh, metformin has the lowest drug adherence rate among all other diabetes drugs in patients, even though it is very good at lowering. Blood sugar levels and lowering HbA1c values. Right from a pharmacist and a pharmaceutical scientist viewpoint, the metformin formulation used in the clinical trial is not the best one. Okay, let's find out why. So here it says that the Formulations or dosage form of this、uh, metformin used in the study is immediate immediate release. Now, what immediate release drug dosage mean is that the content of the tablet is all absorbed into the body at once, so、uh, creating a high spike in the drug concentrations in the blood, and the immediate release is known to have more GI side effects. On the other hand,、uh, most people that are、uh, that have diabetes are taking extended release metformin. Now, extended formulations is better tolerated, and it means that the drug content is slowly released from the tablet matrix, and the drug concentration in the blood、uh, is sustained at a relatively lower but uh, level. Uh, doesn't get a huge spike. But for a longer period of time as well. So if someone has never、um, had metformin and is being prescribed、uh, the clinical trial immediate release dose, even if the dose you know is being titrated up or going up slowly, it does not guarantee patient adherence. Some of them may not just you know you know you know fitting or sitting well with that GI side effect in my opinion or in many patients' opinion as well. Now, there's another things about another thing about metformin that we need to pay attention here is that metformin also has a black box warning for lactic acidosis. The side effect uh, rate uh, for lactic acidosis、uh, is about one in thirty thousand patients, particularly those who have lower liver and kidney function and elderly. Now consider. Uh, many people have long COVID, and the risk factor for long COVID,、uh, you know, is more so with elderly people and with、uh, people with comorbidity. The more performance is used widely, the higher the chance for that one in thirty thousand incident rate to happen. All right. So 
the bottom line is that while long COVID is a huge medical and societal problem that we must tackle, some drugs may be useful to help with the condition. We still need more studies before saying, well, if I got COVID, I'll take metformin. Uh, at least I wouldn't say it openly like that. You know, there's some still some studies need to iron that out, I think. Now, that is all for this topic. And stay tuned for the second video of this week, which I compare metformin and berberin. And uh, for those of you who want a 10-minute quick summary of metformin's origin, the potential benefit, uh, you can check out the link of that video. I'll put it in the descriptions. I try to put it in some clickable area in this video as well. So thank you very much for watching and take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.